Hello, I'm Maggie, and you actually get to see me this time instead of just my hands and over the piano keys because I didn't like my introduction. I didn't think it was really clear, so I'm making a new one. So I did an experiment because someone told me that fourths are more tolerant of being wide than fifths are narrow because the second, if you tune a fourth pure at the first coincident partial, the second coincident partial will be, um, narrow. So as you widen the fourth, you widen both the first and second coincident partials. So the second one actually gets closer to pure. Whereas a fifth, it's a narrow interval. So if you tune it pure at the first coincident partial and you make it more narrow from that, <clears throat> the second coincident partial gets further away from pure. And this makes sense to me because every interval, if you tune it pure, at the first coincident partial, if you have consistent inharmonicity, otherwise all bets are off, um, if you tune it pure at the first coincident partial, it's going to be wide at the second coincident partial. So any wide interval, as you widen it, the upper partials will get closer together, and any narrow interval, as you narrow it, the upper partials will get further away. So I decided to experiment on my, my piano with fifths and fourths, to demonstrate this um, early and with my little visual um, harmonic strips. It was kind of fun. So if you're interested in everything I just said, stay tuned. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, check the description below because it will have a link to my music theory for piano technicians, which will give you all the information you need to understand this video. I'm back. So if, look, quick review with coincident partials, if I have a G3 to D4 fifth, fifth ratio is three to two, third coincident partial from the lower note lines up with the second coincident partial of the upper note at D5. You get the second coincident partial by doubling the ratio. So three to two becomes six to four, and that falls on D6. So if I, if I, if we have no inharmonicity, the, the both coincident partials will line up and everything will be in tune, but we do have inharmonicity. So I'm gonna get my inharmonicity strip. There we go. And if I, if we have regular inharmonicity and consistent inharmonicity, then this will work. If you don't, it's different. So if I tune this fifth, my G to D, G3, D4 fifth, pure, the first coincident partial, then the second coincident partial will be narrow. Now let's, let's measure this. So I'm gonna measure this, which is hopefully still tuned pure at the first coincident partial. That's awfully close. So we're very close to pure at the first coincident partial. So now it should measure narrow at the second coincident partial. Let's see how that goes. Definitely narrow. Major third is slower, so we are narrow. So this this is true, this proves true. Now, let's look at a fourth. Quick reminder about the fourths. We have, the ratio is four to three. So our first coincident partial from a G3, C4 fourth falls at the fourth partial from G and the third partial from C to G5. Four to three doubled is eight to six. So the next coincident partial falls at the eighth and sixth partials of the G3, C4 fourth at G6. But they're not gonna be in tune with each other because we have inharmonicity. So I'm going back to my inharmonicity strip here. If I tune G3, C4 pure at the first coincident partial, it will be narrow at the second coincident partial. So let's measure this. It's close. I'm gonna go with that. We're close enough for this. <clears throat> so if I'm pure at the first coincident partial, 
uh, I will be narrow at the second coincident partial. We don't talk about the second coincident partial of fourths much because we don't use them all that much, but I'm gonna move this out of my way. The, the check note, calibration note for the second coincident partial of a fourth is a minor third above the upper note. One, two, uh, three, four, five. It lines up at their coincident partial. So I'm going to measure it here with a minor sixth and a minor third. Much slower. Minor third is much slower. That proves that my strips are correct and that it is, <clears throat> excuse me, it is narrow at the second coincident partial. Now, the opposites should also be true if, you know, if I tune it pure at the second coincident partial, the first ones should be uh, wide. So let's go down and do that. I've, I've tuned um, this fourth and this fifth. So I have E3, A3 fourth, and D3, A3 fifth. Uh, let's look at the fifth first because we did the fifth first last time. So if I take my little visual aid here and line up, uh, where am I here? Three to two, meow, meow, there I am. If I line up my second coincident partial, this shows me wide at my first. So let's measure the second coincident partial first. Uh-oh, wait a minute. I'm narrow. Let me lower my D just a minute. This, I've really messed up my piano and it's not liking it very much. Whoops. It's taking so long I'm trying to really be precise but I'm gonna stop there it's it's close regardless so if I'm very close to pure at the second coincident partial let's see where it is at the first coincident partial that's very wide so even if this is a little off it's still obviously so it's very wide at the second coincident partial so now let's go over the fourth if I tune the fourth pure, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, heavens, I'm way up here. I'm gonna get all confused now. So let's see. If I tune my fourth uh, wide, wait a minute. I think I've messed up. Oh yeah, I have. Where's my fourth? Four, three. Now it's pure at the first coincident partial visually. The second coincident partial is here. There we go. Now I'm on track. Sorry about that. This gets a little tricky. So there's my coincident partial. So E3, A3, coincident partials at E6. And I measure that with C4. So here's my minor six, minor third. That's close. to adjust that one thank goodness so that is pure at the second coincident partial it should be quite wide at the first coincident partial and it is okay so I've proven all those things true let me go over the point of all this again <clears throat> I'm gonna use the D to A fifth visually here D3 A3 if I tune it pure at the first coincident partial. It is narrow at the second coincident partial. If I narrow it at the first, it gets more narrow at the second. It gets further away from pure at the second as I temper the fifth narrow. So that creates more beats up high. The fourth, on the other hand, is a wide interval. So while it's still true <clears throat> that if I tune it pure at the first coincident partial, it is, um, narrow at the second. If I widen, the, let me put my fingers on the coincident partials so you can see them here. <clears throat> Where am I? Here I am. If I widen my fourth, the second coincident partial gets closer together because it was already wide. I mean, it was already narrow. My bad. 
So I widen my fourth, the second coincident partial becomes less beady. Now, what does this mean? It means that we're lucky in that we can tune our fourths a little bit wider than our fifths are narrow, which is what we need to do because of inharmonicity. And, and it can be quite a challenge to get everything to balance. Um, I think this matters more on pianos with greater inharmonicity, because if you have a piano with low inharmonicity, these are going to be closer to lining up anyway. <clears throat> but a piano with greater inharmonicity, your fifths are going to be a little more offensive if they're tuned noticeably narrow. Um, for example, if I have a, a D to A, D3, A3 fifth, and I tune it pure at the first coincident partial and it's narrow at the second, on a piano with high inharmonicity, that's what you, this is the arrangement you're going to have to have if you want, <clears throat> excuse me, close to a um, pure 12th tuning, for example. If you want a pure 12th tuning, you better tune it pure at that first coincident partial because the second one's still going to be narrow. If you tune it pure at the second, the first one's going to be wide. Are there cases where you might want that? Yes, when you have inharmonicity shifts that you have to work around. So, but assuming there's no inharmonicity shifts, you should get a pretty nice tuning, tuning it very close to pure, <clears throat> excuse me again, at the first coincident partial. And with force, with a lot of inharmonicity, they can tolerate being more wide because of that second partial being closer to pure. Um, so with high inharmonicity, you can get more stretch out of the piano without it being quite as offensive. Um, and I'm saying get more stretch. It might be good to have more stretch in a piano like that. With a piano with low inharmonicity, you don't need the stretch. It's not necessary. It's all the partials are lining up close together. If you stretch it, you'll have every, you'll have all your fifths wide. You'll have your twelfths wide. You don't want that. So anyway, <clears throat> I hope this is helpful. If you have no idea what I've been talking about, check the link below and it will explain everything you need to know to understand this video. I hope this was useful to someone. And if it's not useful, I hope it's at least interesting. If you like the video, like it. If you like this kind of thing, please subscribe. Thank you so much and happy tuning. Bye-bye.